Hi! Everyone who's tried to make a skirt with physics into VR chat knows that skirts are kind of a pain to deal with. So here in this video I want to show you my take on how I made this skirt work in VR chat. I start off by making my own bones and rig and weight paint. If you already have a model that you're happy with, the rig and with the weight paint, you can skip to approximately 8 minutes into the video. Okay, so how to make your own skirt bones and weight painting in a rather easy way. First, I'll go into the orthogonal view, edit mode, and duplicate the hip bone. Doesn't really matter where it's positioned, I'll put it here to be easier to select. I'll name it root skirt and parent it to the hip bone. Make sure to uh, keep offset. Um, from here, I will hide every other bone. Just keep this here and extrude it. We will name this skirt one one. Uh, in the bone properties, make sure it's not connected. And put it approximately where you want the skirt physics to start. Make it one bone from the very start to the very end. Make sure that it's also in the middle, so X position is zero. And now we can also hide the skirt root. Good, now that we have this, we can subdivide this bone. Subdivide it two times so that we have three bones in this chain. In the this setting here, we should change the display as to envelope because we will use envelopes to do the weight painting for us. How do we control that properly? If we select the bone, uh, we have a radius from the head and the radius from the tail uh, here. I will set uh, the radius from the first bone to 0 0.01, then 0 0.02 and make it like a chain downwards, 0 0.03 and here 0 0.04. And then the envelope size is basically telling us how big the envelope is or like how big the radius of the whole thing is when we apply the weights. So I found it to work pretty well when we use a radius envelope radius of 0 0.03. You can just select all the other ones and then uh, copy to select it. And now we have one chain of bones for the skirt bone with proper envelopes. So now we can switch back to octahedral mode. I like that a lot more. And now we can duplicate it. Go to top orthogonal view duplicate it and yeah it depends on how many bones you want just duplicate it and put them where they approximately should be make sure that they are somewhat spaced evenly now we can go to the other view and make sure that they are actually rotated properly where they're supposed to be Okay, you can probably make this a little bit prettier, but for the moment I will be fine with this. So now we will name them uh, like this. I will do skirt one, two, copy that, skirt one, three, then skirt two, one, L, and so on. We need that L at the end so that we can symmetrize it afterwards. Now that we've named them all, we can go ahead, select all of them, go up here, armature, symmetrize. And now we have proper skirt bones everywhere with good names and good envelopes. Now we can do the weight painting. Make sure to separate the skirt mesh. Um, separate it like this because otherwise, for example, my tail would get weight painting to the skirt bones as well or this thing. We don't want it. We only want the skirt to be weight painted to these bones. 
So I will hide the rest of the body. And the easiest way to do is to go into pose mode first and select uh, or like hide everything else that only the skirt bones are still left. In weight paint mode, it's a little bit harder to select that. Good. Go back to object mode and now weight paint mode. Hmm. Still have the tailbone here. Good. Now we have this. We can go ahead, select weights, select all the bones, weights, and assign from bone envelopes. And now we will have weight painting applied according to the bone envelopes. That is very harsh and not ideal. It looks very um, not smooth when the, you move it now. So we select all the bones, weights, and smooth. By default, it will say active group here. I need to change it to selected pose bones. Then it will do it for all of the selected bones. And you want to increase the iterations to quite a bit. You can mess around with it. I'll put it on, nope, vector 0.5. Let's do like six iterations maybe. This is usually also 0.5. Um, you can mess around with the values with what you like, how smooth it looks like. But I think this should be okay for now. So now if we move that, it looks a lot more smooth. And the weight paint is all there. Now it might look a little weird at the top. Whoops because there's weight painting here. So if we move it out, the skirt is kind of going inwards. Um, so to combat that, I use the gradient tool, set the weight to zero, and uh, I just drag it down so that there's not that much weight at the top. I just wing it here. There's probably a way to make it smarter and uh, more even, but doesn't matter too much. Okay, great. Now we have that, we can join that back to the main body. And if we now go into pose mode, we have our skirt bones. And it's weight painted properly, it's named properly. And we do have a skirt root that we can put the fizz bone component on. All right, so this is what probably most of you people have if you've skipped here. A normal model with skirt bones. Make sure to have a root skirt bone. And now we need to do a couple more things in Blender before we go into Unity with fist bones. We go into edit mode and make sure that you only have the skirt bones visible. Makes it a lot easier. And in these settings, enable access. That way you can see all the axes of the bones. And in order to fully utilize the fist bones, we need to roll the bones properly. So maybe your model already has properly rolled bones. You can check that if the Z axis is facing inwards. For me, I just created them. They're all facing to the back, so that's not helping us. Uh, so I will make sure that everything is zero. Press Alt R, zero to make sure everything is properly. Go to top orthogonal view and change the transform orientation to normal. And also change this to individual origins. Select the whole chain, press Control R, and now you can roll the bones. Now you need to make sure that all the Z axes are facing into the middle. So I select this chain, I make sure that symmetrized is um, activated, then you only need to do it once. Control R and make sure that it's facing inside. For these, I will just press Alt R again, and then you can set the number here to 180. And then it's perfectly 180 degree turned to the inside. 
So far so good. Now what I like to do is disable the axis again, is create another bone on top of all of these that are responsible for rotation constraints because I will do everything with rotation constraints. I will select the top row of these bones, duplicate it and scale it on the Y axis. So that's kind of facing upwards. And now I also move it upwards on the Y axis a little bit because Unity can't handle zero length bones. So then we have it approximately like this. Now we need to parent it properly. So select these bones and parent it to the bones responsible for the rotation constraints. Make sure to have symmetrized activated so that you only need to do it on one side. Great. So if we now go to pose mode and take one of these bones responsible for the constraint and move that, everything should work just fine. Yep. That means we're done with everything in Blender and can head over to Unity. Okay, so now we are in Unity. Um, have our model here and we will start off with rotation constraints. So for all of these skirt bones that we added, I will add a rotation constraint. I will add a source to all of them. And for the ones in the middle and the front, I will add a second source. Good. Now I will select all the left skirt bones and add the left leg as a source here. Now we go and select all the right skirt bones and add the right leg to it. That means if we activate all of them, uh, first the one in the front and the back, they will have both the left leg and the right leg added. So now if we select all of them and activate them and we were to rotate the legs, it rotates the skirt with it. This will make sure that we don't have clipping without using any colliders at all. But this looks quite stiff on 100%. Also, there's some weird things happening in the back. So what we do is we change the values of the weight. So what I found to work pretty well is the one in the front has a weight of one. Then on the sides, so skirt two, we'll have 0.8. Can actually select both at the same time and do it like this. Then these, I will use 0 0.6, 0 0.4. These I will use 0.2. And for these maybe 0.1 weight. The one in the very back will also be 0 0.1. So now if we rotate the leg, the skirt bones in the front will move a lot with the leg and the ones in the back and on the side won't move as much. So this will already make sure that you won't really have any clipping going on. You can mess around with the values and see what you like more. But these are values that I kind of like to use. Now that we have that done, we need to add the physics, of course. Let's go to the skirt root. I already have the component here because, of course, I didn't want to mess around with the values in the tutorial. Um, you can just add a fizzbone component. I use simplified with these kind of values. Pull 0 0.3 with this kind of curve. Spring 0 0.6 with this kind of curve. Gravity 004, gravity fall of one, so that we don't have the gravity applied when we're standing, only when I'm laying down or sitting or whatever. And the mobile 0 0.2. Now the important part comes with the limits because bones that have a rotation constraint applied behave a little weird when there's a fist bone. So I locked these bones down with the limits. You can see that here. I'm using Polar to have a better control over how the bones can move. 
But let's just go over it, what it does. Let's recreate this. Um, curve. Let's re delete that, add a curve. Good, so at the start, I make a double click here and a double click right next to it. Select all of these bones, uh, bones, control points and set it to auto clamped. Now I can select these two, hold shift so that you just move it down. And now we have this kind of curve. I'll move it as close as I can. Great. So when you go very close, you can see that the bones here currently have a value assigned as well. We can maybe make it bigger so that you can see it there. Now, if I move this further and further to the right, oops, select both, hold down shift and move it. So here's the threshold. If we go to 0 0.3, this circle disappears, which means the rotation constraint bones have a limit of zero. They are not allowed to move in that direction. All the other bones have the limit applied as normally. So we want that to be a curve. I have it kind of like this, if I remember correctly, so that uh, the further down ones can move more, the further the ones up can't move as, up, as much and put it back to our 11. And basically we do the same thing for the rotation. The polar setting allows it, allows the bones to move very far in that direction. So if you spin yourself, they can rotate around you. But on the other side, on the pitch, it is very limited. So when you walk forwards, it won't clip into you. And if you walk backwards, it won't go really high up. So it's very convenient. I set the pitch to minus five so that everything is, all the limits are going outwards. So all of the skirt bones are able to move out quite a bit more than inside. We don't want anything to clip. So I found minus five to work really well. Now let's test it by going into play mode. I will also lock the inspector on the skirt route so I can select the hips and move it around while still seeing the values. So everything is moving. Even if I move fast, there's no clipping because of the angles. And it looks pretty good in my opinion. And even if I lift the lag, rotate that, it moves along with it, can't move it backwards. Um, and there's no clipping here either. So when you have full body tracking or you sit down or anything, there will not be any clipping. We can still have a look at what the values exactly are doing. So if we change the pitch a little bit more like this, we can see now they are constantly getting pushed outwards because of the pitch rotation limit um, it can move a lot to the outside, but not to the inside at all. At minus five, it can move slightly to the inside. So if I go here and do this, it can move towards your own body, but not as much. So it can't clip. And same thing is for the pitch. If I increase that uh, and move this, and move very fast, it would be able to go very high up. And I don't want that. So I am good with 11. All right, I don't think I have anything else to put down here. It works pretty well without a single collider. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. And yeah, have a good day.